Hey, this is Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. In this video, we're going to be covering the Serverless Prune plugin. Uh, in this series, we've been covering the plugins that the Serverless framework relies on. Um, they've been created by the open source community uh, and kind of contributed to the Serverless framework's growth uh, and popularity. So these plugins are super useful, and we've already gone through a couple of them so far. Uh, this one allows you to creep unused versions of deployed functions from AWS. What that basically means is that every time that you do a deployment of a Lambda function through the serverless framework, it updates a version number. And so the first one is one, the second one is two, three, four, 100, 102, so on, so on. Um, and it just keeps going, right? And so it can kind of get unwieldy and out of control. And so what we want to do is we want to actually remove some of those. And so to do that, we can go ahead and create a new serverless project. We'll install everything that we need. We'll make a couple of, we'll make like two or three actual deployments and update the version number and check that in the console. And then we'll go through and we'll prune it. So let's go ahead and jump into our terminal and we'll do SLS create dash dash template, AWS dash node.js dash dash path. And we're gonna call this serverless prune plugin. So I am lazy, so I'm just going to copy the name. Then we're going to CD into serverless prune plugin. And we're going to run m init dash y. Then we're going to open this in Atom. Inside of Atom, we're going to go inside of our package.json. We're going to update this to say temp. Um, this is strictly because that when you download a dependency and your package.json has the same name, it will throw errors, as we've seen in multiple videos now in this plugin course. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and npm install, and we're going to install the prune plugin. So now that we have this installed, we can jump over to the serverless file. We're going to take out all of this boilerplate, as we've done in previous projects. Awesome. Now that we have this cleaned up, we're going to add a section called custom and we're going to add a section called plugins. We're going to specify our serverless prune plugin and down in this custom section, we're actually going to add a config. Let's scroll down into the serverless prune plugin and you can read more about what it's actually doing here. Uh, so it looks like we've already done step one, which is installing it. We've added it to our plugin, which is step two. Um, step three is to uh, install with the serverless plugin. Uh, we already, this is like an alternative approach. Uh, we already installed it with npm, so we don't need to actually do this. So in the project root, we can actually run sls prune in. So to do that first, we have to create a couple of versions. So let's go ahead and do our first deployment of this. So if you type sls deploy v, it will start the deployment. As you notice, we don't have any actual custom section here. We've already defined our plugins, but really all we're doing is we're deploying this Lambda part. Um, so we're going to deploy this a couple of times. The first one is version one and two and so on. So we'll make a couple of deployments. We can update the code just by making a small little comment. Each time that we update the code, it'll actually create a new version. And from there, after we have a couple of versions, we can then use the plugin to remove them. Something that we can also do, which we have seen uh, in the uh, serverless commands, in the serverless intro course, uh, if you actually went to serverlessguru.com, with the all courses. Inside this serverless introduction, there's actually, uh, it goes over things like dynamic ver variables, serverless commands. Inside of the serverless commands, it goes over how to actually deploy um, using the specific uh, command for deploying a function, which is what we're doing. So we can look this up, go to serverless, the function deploy. So 
So by writing serverless deploy function, dash dash function, and then the function name, we don't actually have to deploy the entire stack. Um, and we can just skip over that and deploy the specific function itself. So this is great because it's a lot faster and this will give us a lot of versions. So now that this is deployed, we can switch over to the, the CloudFormation console and make sure that everything looks okay. All right, and now let's actually open up the Lambda console. We can open this in a new tab. And we have one function and let's look at the version number. So we have one version. So that looks okay. Now let's go ahead and make some changes. We'll add, actually let's just delete this and say um, one, two, three. Okay, now we can save it. Run SLS deploy function dash F. Let's make sure that lines up. Service deploy function dash F is the shorthand. And we can specify our function name, which in our case should be hello. We can grab that there. And we'll give it a dash V. So it is packaging the function hello and it's updating it. Now if we switch back to the Lambda console and we refresh this one, we can jump over to versions. Like it did not update our version properly get out of this and come back and see what's going on. Out of the code it has changed, but the version number has not updated. Okay, so let's go ahead and run an SLS deploy dash V, see if we can get it to do it that way. As you can see, it takes a lot longer to actually run a SLS deploy. But as you can see up here, AWS Lambda version, this is what we were missing when we were just doing the function update. So that is actually something good to note. So I'm actually going to leave it in the video because when you actually do a serverless uh, deploy function, you may think that you're updating the version when actually what you're doing is just updating the code to the existing version. So now we can look at versions and we have version two, which is great. Um, let's go ahead and do this one more time. Now this may or may not work depending on if it auto detects. So as you can see, it auto detects that there was no change. Let's go into handler.js and add a couple dots. This should re-trigger the Lambda version update. But as you can see, the last deployment, which was here, it basically checks your files and sees if there's an update or not. And if there isn't, it doesn't do anything and it skips it. If there is, then it actually goes through and, and runs the update. Which is something good to note if, in case you're wondering why something's not working. Uh, potentially, the you never saved it and it's still looking at the old version. That's why it's not deploying. Okay, so now that this is ready to go, let's switch over to the serverless hello function and we can see that there's three versions cool so i think this is a good enough uh, use case to actually see this plugin in action so let's switch back to the serverless plugin repository and we can run sls prune dash n and it says this will delete all but the end most recent versions of each function deployed so if you had five functions inside of your serverless.yaml, we only have one, but if you had five, it would go through and prune all of those. And this is basically saying, um, basically, this is the number to keep. So if you want to keep one, then it'll keep one. If you want to keep two, it'll keep two, all the way up to every, whatever, whichever one you want. So what we're going to do, we could run uh, this command up here, um, but let's go ahead and see both. So let's run this top one, and we'll say to keep two of them. Okay, now let's switch back to the console and see what's going on. Instead of Lambda, if we switch back to qualifiers, we have three and two. So what it did is it deleted one because we said we wanted to keep two of the latest ones. So 
one more thing that we can do is we can say practical plugin. Let's specify based on our function. So we can delete this here. Ours is called hello. And we can take out this number of versions to keep, leave it to one. So now what should happen is inside the Lambda console, after we deploy this, it should only have this version three left, and it shouldn't have two. Because we're basically saying keep the latest one. And we're saying on the function hello. Cool, and it's very quick. So now if we refresh, we look at qualifiers and versions, we only have one version there. So this is great. As you actually grow your projects, this number, this versions, why they say it can get out of control. Because imagine that you're working on something every, all day and you're actually deploying something and you want to see it live and running. You end up creating this really big chain of versions where you have 150 different versions or more um, and it can kind of get uh, unwieldy. So this allows you to clean it up really quickly. Let's see if there's any other options that we can look at. So you can also specify region and stage and you can do automatic pruning. So Looks like um, this plugin can also be configured to run automatically following a deployment. Configuration of automatic pruning is within the custom property. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this. Um, and so we're setting it to true, and the number of versions to keep must be specified. So let's actually add this and let's set it to one and then see if it will actually keep it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a change to the code. Uh, two more dots. Then we're going to run a serverless deploy. And what we're trying to say is we only want the most recent recent version. We don't want uh, multiple versions. So in this automatic pruning, uh, it should actually take that out. Um, and then when we go to the console, we should only see the number four, the fourth version. Well, it looks like there's also a dry run. Dry run will preview the deletion candidates without actually performing the prune operations. So this kind of just allows you to test it. And then they also have a help command. Cool, so let's go over to our terminal. So as we can see here, the prune ran in the second that it was over and it said pruning complete. So now if we go over to the Lambda console, ideally we should see four here and we do. So this is how you can do automatic uh, pruning. Um, you can set this number to whatever you want. We set it to one, that's why we only have one be set to three or five or 10 or 100, um, whatever you want, and it will automatically check that and then handle it from there for you. So I hope you got a lot out of this, um, kind of a cool uh, tool to use just to make sure that everything is like clean. Um, and I'm sure all the developers on your team and in other teams will, and the person that gets hired later on to basically maintain your code, uh, will be happy that you had something like this in place. So. Uh, this was Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. I will see you next time.